This is a meditation for Holy Saturday. Uh, it's episode 9 of Art and Faith. And today we'll be looking at the third panel of the Maskell Ivories, which is uh, dedicated to uh, depicting uh, the truth of our Lord's resurrection from the dead. So on this Holy Saturday, as we pray and are silent, we keep vigil awaiting uh, the good news of our Lord's resurrection. And first of all, just to remind you, the Maskell ivories are ivory, a uh, set of four ivory carvings, each of which is a, nearly four inches long, and they uh, comprised a, a box that was most probably a pyx for carrying the Blessed Sacrament to those who couldn't be present uh, at the Holy Mass. And the panels are remarkable because the first, the earliest, one of the earliest images of Christ on the cross, also the earliest um, pictorial narrative of our Lord's passion and death. They're remarkable also for the quality of the workmanship. Whoever made these was a real craftsman and was reviving kind of um, uh, some of the skills of the ancient world for depicting the human form in a more or less naturalistic way. And the panels are uh, finally uh, remarkable because of the kind of theological depth and complexity that they contain. And I think we saw that in the earlier, uh, especially in the panel of our Lord's resurrection. And finally, each panel uh, tries to depict a kind of key moment in the narrative. So in the first panel, which was uh, dedicated to Jesus carrying the cross, you can see it there, uh, the key moment is the reconciliation between Christ and Peter. Peter falls back uh, uh, in shame, I guess, when our Lord looks at him, but at the same time he reaches out his hand and Christ reaches out his hand, and the kind of reconciliation uh, is about to be accomplished. So that's the kind of key moment of that panel. In the crucifixion scene, which was the second scene, uh, the key moment depicted, uh, I argued, was the moment when Longinus thrusts his spear into Christ's side. And we see in the panel the reverberations of that event, especially in the in in Mary who 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 feels that uh, that wound in her own heart thus 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 we witness the fulfilling of the prophecy of Simeon that a sword would pierce her own soul also so the image I'm going to look at today is an image of the empty tomb and the question that we will be asking guiding question is what is the dramatic moment that is depicted in this panel so First, I'm going to uh, show you uh, the panel. Uh, here it is. So what you see in the center, uh, you, see the, uh, to you see the tomb of Christ, and the doors of that tomb are burst open, and we can see inside uh, the tomb that is the empty tomb. Uh, on each side of the tomb are two soldiers who were supposed to be guarding the tomb, but who fell asleep. And on each side above are the two Marys who have come to the tomb early in the morning. Uh, now, several, several, uh, many things are remarkable about this, but I'll point out one so that you notice that the tomb of Christ is very kind of stylized. Uh, it has a, a kind of round dome at the top. And that, and remember, this was made in the 420s, 430s, and that uh, structure is a, a visual reference to the tomb of Christ in Jerusalem. That Remember, the Emperor Constantine built a basilica uh, at the tomb of Christ, and over the actual tomb of Christ, there was, he built a kind of structure that had this domed top. So that is a kind of visual reference to the tomb of Christ that exists in Jerusalem. So obviously the person who made this, or the person who directed its making, had some knowledge of the topography and the holy sites of Jerusalem and, and, and the Holy Land. Um, now, um, 
And uh, so how do, then do we read this picture and what is the kind of key moment? Well, I think the, um, the, you'll notice that this image contains a set of images within the image. So here the doors of the tomb are uh, decorated with images, and these images, I think, are the uh, key to the meaning of this depiction. So in the central center of the door, you have a lion, I hope this is clear, you have a lion there, who is amusingly fashioned as a door knocker. So if you think that artists in the early church didn't have any, uh, any, I didn't have a sense of humor. Well, there you go. The lion is figured as a door knocker. But lion, as we know, is also an image of Christ. That in scriptural terms, Christ is the lion of the tribe of Judah. And also, uh, a lion is an image of the resurrection. Because in the sort of ancient kind of mythology surrounding animals, the lion was thought to sleep with its eyes open. So even though the lion was asleep, he was awake. So even though Christ is dead, then nevertheless he will awaken again. He will, uh, he will rise from the dead. Okay, so in the very center then we have the, the lion, which is the lion of the tribe of Judah, uh, which is the um, uh, uh, it's amusingly configured as a door knocker. But beneath that, you can see an image there. And that image uh, is an image actually of Job on his dung hill. And we know this because we can compare this with similar images in other contexts. So that's Job on his dung hill. So that is Job at the very lowest moment of his life, at a time of kind of utter despair. So when the, Job's friends came to him, they sat with him on the ground seven days and seven nights, and no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his suffering was very great. So at the bottom, we see Job in a moment of utter and absolute despair. But the image at the top, which I hope you can see there, might be difficult to read. I'll get it as close as I can without uh, blurring it. So that is an image. Uh, you can see uh, on the left-hand side an image of Christ, and what he is doing is he is raising Lazarus uh, from the dead. So it's an image of, it's, itself is an image of life, an image of resurrection. And I think the, the uh, proper uh, way to read the door is from the bottom to the top. So the bottom is an image of despair, so despair. Uh, hopelessness, uh, great suffering, through the lion of the tribe of Judah, who will rise from the dead, will be turned into joy, a joy comparable to that that Martha and Mary experienced when their brother Lazarus was um, raised from the dead. So the panel, the images within the image, then give us uh, a clue to the meaning of the whole. Now, what we're meant to notice here, I think, is the resemblance between the posture of Job and the posture of the two Marys on either side. As Job is in despair, so the two Marys are in a moment of despair, a moment of kind of hopelessness. And this brings us to the dramatic moment of this image. So the dramatic moment of this image is this, that the two Marys have come to the tomb, they have found the tomb empty, but they do not yet know that Christ is risen from the dead. The angel hasn't appeared to tell them that he is risen from the dead and he has gone before you to Galilee. So we see the two Marys then in, 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 a, moment at, in a moment of despair, the moment just before they are to receive the good news of our Lord's resurrection. And I think the the uh, the the kind of uh, conceit of the image is that even though they don't know that Christ has risen from the dead, although they soon will, nevertheless we ourselves who are 
intelligent and faithful readers of this image, we know that Christ has risen from the dead. And so we sing uh, our Easter Alleluia, Alleluia, as we look forward to the great commemoration this evening of, of our Lord's resurrection from the dead. And, and, um, and uh, in here, the uh, suffering of Job is very real. Uh, he is a man who has lost everything that was precious to him in his life. And he's, his suffering, as it says somewhat laconically in the book of Job, his suffering was very great. And also the suffering of the two Marys as they've come to the tomb is also great, that um, the one whom they loved, the most uh, beautiful person they had ever known, the kind of wisest, the kindest, most compassionate being they had ever experienced, has been taken away from them. So they are in a moment when they think that life itself has been destroyed, life itself has been defeated. And soon the good news of the resurrection, the light of Christ, will burst in upon them. Well, during this time of the coronavirus, uh, our sufferings are very great. Uh, suffering, especially the kind of spiritual sufferings of Catholics who are exiled from the Mass and who are exiled from the sacraments, who cannot be with us this evening as we celebrate the sacred liturgy. Well, the suffering of Catholics is is great. The wound that 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 they are experienced, I think, is all too real. Um, so, uh, prayer, maybe kind of lame prayer at this stage of the game, but a prayer nonetheless that that in the darkness of this exile, may the light of the risen Christ shine in your heart. Amen. <laughs>